All right, everyone, it's a happy day over in Sweden. And no, I, I really mean that. A lot of people right now, if they're like nationalistic, populistic, they're cut up about the election results because they were expecting the Swedish Democrats to get like 25% of the vote. Can I please take care of your fears and calm you down and talk you back from the ledge right now? Because this is exactly what I figured would happen. Look, here's the thing. The way in which upstart parties like the Swedish Democrats, a UKIP, anything like that, or even Trump's sort of internal surge within the Republican Party. The way that they operate has never been, they seize power by slowly building up to a majority and so they become totalitarian in nature. The way in which they win is to get enough of the vote so that the mainline parties cannot individually govern. Here's the problem. Right now you have a situation where neither the moderate block nor the so-called center-right, but I would say the leftist block and, and the center-left block, but in Sweden they'd be labeled differently. The moderate center-right and the moderate center-left. Non-existent, but okay, I'll go along with the Swedes here. So let's just say you have a center-right and a center-left. Neither of them have, as a coalition, the ability to govern. They don't have 51% of the population behind them. They each have like 40%. Because the Swedish Democrats went from a little less than 13% of the vote to just shy of 18% of the vote. That is, election over election, significant growth. And this is exactly what happened with Geert Wilders. The, social, the Sweden Democrats won this election because they grew significantly enough to put the government in a situation where now you're going to have some weird coalition arise in order to actually accomplish things. Those coalitions are unstable and dysfunctional. Here's the problem. You have so-called center-right and center-left, or, or whatever they're labeling them. They will never be able to come to terms. They will strangulate the government. They will not work well together because they're not used to having to work well together. They will be crippled and unable to govern. And because of that strangulation, it's the strangulation. It's not, not the immigrant crisis. That's a symptom of strangulation within Europe right now. It's just a symptom. It's not the euro as a currency block. It's not the Shenzhen area. It's not any of these individual problems. It's strangulation within governments because of the way they are structured within Europe, where you can have a government incapable of really doing anything. Because they can't do anything, they can't stand up against the migrant crisis that's given to them from Brussels. They can't stand up against crime. They'll never be able to design any meaningful legislation. For the subsequent years to come, before the next election, the only group that will offer Sweden a solution are the Swedish Democrats. They will continue to grow. They will probably hit 25% in the next election. At which point, they will be a major partner within some sort of coalition of the unwilling, where the moderate so-called center-right will have no choice but to partner with them because there will be nobody else to partner with. And that's when they win. This is what's happening in France. Marine Le Pen, she didn't get a majority. Boo-hoo, how sad. People said, oh, well, I guess the globalists have won now. The far left have won now. No, they lost. Because it doesn't matter if you have a majority. All you have to do is prevent governance. Now, in France, in French politics, because of the way they structure things, their government can continue. They don't have to worry as much. Netherlands, you have to have a coalition. In Sweden, you have to have a coalition, unless someone has an outright majority. This is the case in many parts of Europe. Those are the vulnerable spots within Europe whenever you have that sort of, go of governance. And it's happened before. This has historical precedence for so long. Weimar Germany. The Nazis never won a majority. The commies never won a majority. It's just that they kept growing and eventually the center couldn't form a government. They couldn't operate. How are you supposed to operate at that point when, you, when it's obvious you don't have the will of the people? The problem is this. One side of the so-called, the, the technical dichotomy within Swedish politics of the left coalition and the right coalition, so-called, one of them will inevitably try to appease voters. It'll try to stop the, the Swedish Democrats by going half-assed. They'll say, okay, yeah, we realize there's a crisis with immigration within our country, but they're, they're hardliners. No, don't listen to them, listen to us. But they won't be able to do anything because they'll be stopped by the left. And because they're no longer capable of doing anything, the Swedish Democrats will say, look, we told you this would happen. You've got to side with us. We are the only ones who will do anything about the problem. They won't. Even if they want to, they can't. That's a winning strategy within voting. Happened within, within the United States in the last election now, didn't it? 
The Republicans ran a normal center-right so-called Republican campaign of we're going to promise tax cuts. It'll be by half a percent, if anything. We're going to promise that we're, we're more reluctant than George W. to go to war, and then we'll go to war. Uh, we're we're pro-gun, but we're not going to introduce any legislation to strip back, you know, uh, a tax on the Second Amendment. We're going to appease the Democrats, kick the can down the road with immigration. We'll probably end up bending over backwards for amnesty. Trump was the only one who said, no, I'm not going to do that at all. <laughs> I totally disagree. So he was the outlier. What he did, he never had a majority during the primaries of the Republican electorate behind him. But it was a crowded field, and no individual was capable of challenging him. Towards the end, when the field began to, to thin, it didn't matter. He had too much of a vote share by then. He was in the 40s within the Republican Party. It was no longer, there wasn't enough time to stop him. That's what's going to happen in Sweden. It's what's going to happen in the Netherlands. It will happen all over Europe. What's going to happen is that centrist parties, incapable of governing, because they're incapable of working even with other centrist movements so-called, will strangulate themselves over the next half decade to a decade, and things will begin to fall apart. By the time that they actually get proactive about doing something to change the situation that is leading to the rise of so-called fringe movements, and the Swedish Democrats aren't a fringe movement, they're vague populists anyway. They're not, they're not outright nationalistic. They're not genocidal or fascistic or anything. They're just, they're basically, they're, they're an actual slightly conservative, vaguely nativistic movement. By the time that the center gets down to brass tacks and says, oh yeah, we may have a problem, we can't govern, we should do something, it'll be too late. The Swedish Democrats will probably by then be the largest party in Sweden, individually. They'll still be able to form a government. It'll probably have to include the Swedish Democrats. Then there will be reform. The Swedish Democrats will be the minor partner at first. They will get too little of their way, angering their fans and leading to the rise of actual reactionaries within Sweden. Or, conversely, they will get their way. The problem goes the way. They become an applauded secondary party within Swedish politics. They supplant the old center-right. They become the, the second party in Sweden. You'll have a leftist coalition, the Swedish Democrats, and everyone else. And the Swedish Democrats will be in governance at that time. Those are the two possibilities for Sweden at this one. Or, third possibility is the centrists decide to violently purge the so-called Nazis. There's a precedent for that too, I, I would say, if you're a Swedish Democrat. If you, and by the way, do you have uh, uh, secret ballots? Because I think, I was looking at a picture I saw on 4chan the other day, it looks like you have to declare your intent of voting by going up to the table and grabbing a ballot with a party name on it. If that's the case, it's really, really weird. Like, you, you don't have secret ballots? What is this, the fucking 1800s or something? It doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to be so, like, democratic and free and enlightened and you don't even have a secret ballot system? Or maybe I'm totally wrong. If that's the case, I really feel sorry for you. No wonder they only got 18% of the vote. No wonder they didn't get 25%. The thing is, the idea that in a single election, you magically solve problems by changing government and giving the Swedish Democrats the primary party status, that, that, that doesn't happen. It was never going to happen. There was a possibility of the, them becoming the biggest party within Sweden, but then they quickly began to lose steam in the polls. Not because they were doing anything wrong, but because of the same effect we saw here in the United States. Which is that the media over there began saying they're Nazis, they're evil, they're bigots, they're racist, shame on you if you vote for them. And drumming up harassment of them at the polls. Especially if you don't have secret ballots. Like, oh yeah, let me grab this ballot for this party the media has told everyone around me it is a Nazi party for the last six months. Great idea. I'm not going to get jumped in the alley when I leave the polling place. That'd be really sad. I, I hope some Swede can confirm that fact. Again, I feel really sorry for you. That, that might be a reform that you might consider implementing. Secret ballots. You just take a fucking ballot. You go into a booth and fill it out. It's simple. It's really, really easy. It's also more efficient than having them all. Say that. Well, what happens if someone grabs a whole bunch, runs out, fills them out, and then filters them out through people, and they all feed extras through the machine or something? Could happen. You could have some weird situations arise because of that. No, uh... I don't know why you're worried. They grew by five points, despite the fact that they are universally reviled by the whole establishment machine. The, le the so-called left and right don't even fight each other. They only fight the Swedish Democrats. And yet they grew by five points. That's pretty good. It's the same as Trump's polling numbers are really good for someone who gets called Hitler every day by every media outlet in the whole fucking United States and the world at large. It's pretty damn good. 
It's not bad. 42, 43% approval. You try having 43% approval when every corporation in the entire fucking Western world is calling you a Nazi on a day-to-day -day basis. You're not going to be, you'll be at 0% approval very quickly because you won't know how to react. The Swedish Democrats, they obviously understand what they're doing. 25% would have been great. 18% is just as good. It's exactly what Wilders did. He collapsed the center left partner of, of the centrist coalition there. They were piled out of existence. He destroyed them. Increased the share of representation that his movement has. Same as the Swedish Democrats. And people immediately after, his fans said, oh, he failed. He didn't take over the government in a single election. Le Pen failed. All these people failed because they somehow uh, they're just total failures. And meanwhile, there was like a celebration among the center left. The center said, oh, they breathe a sigh of relief. They're so happy. That complacency is why these movements are growing and will continue to grow because they're ignorant. They're morons at trying to deal with these things. They obviously don't have any historians working for them. You need to learn some political history. Get a couple political scientists with specialties in political history to explain to you people what you're doing wrong and you might survive as, as the center of Europe. At this point, it's probably too far along. Look, Eastern Europe's already being run by nationalist populist movements. It's too late for many of you. That's about all. Peace out.